My most popular request by far, the biggest complaint I get about the carnivore diet is that it is not affordable. You know, people cannot spend more than $10, $15 per day on food and they want to eat beef. And I'm like, well, you know, cheap feedlot beef, pork, chicken, eggs, you know, even supermarket dairy things people are used to eating might be affordable and cheap but they're full of agrochemicals, they have poor omega-3 to omega-6 ratios, they don't have the fat soluble vitamins, the minerals, the elements, the fatty acids, the nutrients that your body needs. And then they're like, well, I wanna follow a carnivore diet because it's the least inflammatory diet and it is more nutritious than a standard American diet. And by all means, do I agree with that? But I cannot comfortably recommend someone stuff themselves full of feedlot beef. It's not going to make them healthy. It might be better than a standard American diet for some people, but what we're going to do is go to a local Asian grocery store. We're going to look for wild caught fatty fish. This diet of wild caught fatty fish is arguably the most nutritious diet, uh, including finned fish, shellfish, you know, anything from salmon roe to uni, uh, depending on the pricing in your local Asian market, but you will be surprised at the sheer variety of fresh, frozen, preserved, canned fish, as well as the price point if you look around. Uh, yes, there are other options like you know going to local farmers, and some people can get local grass-fed beef for a fairly affordable price point, but that usually requires buying in bulk or being in a generally very low income part of America or Europe. So for most people, this fatty wild caught fish diet will be the most affordable, the most nutrient dense, and will alleviate any concerns you might have about uh, negative pollutants or chemicals in your food, as well as a lack of nutrients in your food. Uh, this is actually uh, an H Mart. Uh, there are a bunch of these in New York. Uh, sometimes I go to Chinatown too, and I go get some fish. But what we're really looking for is what I would call trash fish. Not that they're necessarily trash fish, but they're wild caught fish that are less desirable because they are like super fatty, super oily, not as palatable, as approachable as, you know, fish that people are used to eating. You know, you're not going to go in here and get wild caught salmon at an affordable price. That's not what we're doing. If you guys haven't been to uh, an Asian supermarket, they tend to have the best variety of like fruits, vegetables, as well as amazing prices on them. You know, you'll find fruit here that you know you never even heard of. Different types of pears, all these different types of oranges, you know, a bunch of different types of prepared food. So if you aren't on a strict carnivore diet, there's definitely a lot of variety uh, you can explore. But you know, the meat here isn't necessarily what we're looking for. We're looking for the fish because all the beef, all the pork, all the chicken is not going to be you know the quality we want. You know, if you're a vegan, you could really save money. 50 pounds of brown rice, 10 bucks. By far, one of the most nutrient-dense, affordable option is clams or mussels. You know, chatter clams, top neck clams. Uh, the little necks are a lot more expensive, but the chatter clams usually, you know, a dollar, two dollars a pound. Uh, you can probably, you know, feed yourself for less than six or seven dollars a day. Of course, we have the wild-caught fish that aren't really too desired. You know, like carp, catfish yellowtail, milkfish, uh, bluefish as well. All of these are two to three dollars a pound. And there's no way you're gonna be able to eat, you know, more than three pounds of this a day. So, definitely a great option. Mussels, $4.99 for one bag, definitely not expensive. You know, same with the oysters. Any shellfish is nutritionally complete. You know, when you do buy, you know, these fin fish, even if you're getting it for relatively cheap, you know, butterfish for $4.99 a pound, you have to eat the organs, the guts, the entrails, and everything to get the complete nutritional profile. The nice thing about, you know, something like shellfish, whether it's conch, oysters, mussels, or clams, is you get the full nutrient profile of the animal by eating it. Uh, blood clam, I've had these before. I, I really do like the, the wild varieties, the heirloom varieties of clams. So these are a lot more expensive, but if you do get to try these, uh, they are tasty. You know, this is what we don't want, uh, farm raised. And generally speaking, any fish that is a really popular name, like trout, uh, you have bronzino, you had the, you know, the tilapia over here earlier. Those fish do tend to be farm raised, so you wanna be careful for that. You know, this is a bit on the more expensive end, you know, seven, eight, nine dollars a pound. Uh, but mackerel, uh, $3.99 a pound, and you'll usually see 
you know, Spanish mackerel, even cheaper, $2.99 a pound. Uh, this is Norwegian mackerel for $3.99 a pound. Flavor-wise, I don't really like the Spanish mackerel, uh, but the Norwegian mackerel is really fatty and really good. Probably couldn't eat more than two pounds of this per day. Uh, so I always tell people, you know, mackerel, herring, great, cheap, affordable options for this diet that are uh, nutritionally complete. You know, sardines are unusually expensive. Usually, uh, surprisingly, sardines and anchovies are more than you would think. Wild salmon, twelve ninety nine a pound. Uh, definitely out of a budget range, but it's something that I really like and enjoy. And I'll have this a lot. Uh, but do bear in mind that most of the salmon is farm raised. Sometimes you'll find the smaller scallops are pretty cheap too. You know, seven ninety nine a pound compared to you know, $14, $15, $16 a pound for the larger scallops, uh, usually called the base scallops. Uh, you have clam meat as well. Uh, $6 a pound for, for this is probably one of the best deals from a nutrient perspective. You know, it's just raw clam meat. Uh, and a bunch of other, you know, wild fish that are a bit above that lower price range that we see with those, you know, trash fish. Unfortunately, most of the shrimp is farm raised. And even if it's not farm raised, it usually does have preservatives in it. Uh, and it's expensive, you know, it's definitely not in the budget range. Wild shrimp is usually well over $15 a pound and they add preservatives to it that you don't want. And you can even taste the preservative and you won't really feel that good after you eat it. You definitely want to keep an eye out in the frozen section. You'll find a bunch of really affordable stuff, you know, whether it's squid, shellfish, or even just frozen fish in general, the sheer variety of frozen seafood. You know, these are $4.99 for a big bag of frozen oysters. At these Asian markets is unbelievable. You know, if you do wanna enjoy yourself once in a while and have the, the cheap farm-raised stuff, you know, that's even an option here. I go look at this wild pink shrimp for $8.99 a pound. This is actually a really good deal. You know, the product of Argentina, wild caught. You're not gonna find wild shrimp for cheaper than that. And you can also find fish fillets, all this type of stuff. The point is that at any sort of Asian grocery store, the variety of wild fish, you know, even if you don't want to get it fresh, you know, we have salted mackerel here, salted sardines, so many cheaper salted preserved wild caught fatty fish, you know, that I haven't even heard of. You know, octopus is a great option, usually on the more expensive side. You know, look at this, a giant four pound baby clam meat bag for $25, that's great. And it's already prepared, you don't have to do anything to it. You know, some more frozen scallops. You really go crazy with the seafood here. Maybe pick up some dumplings for your kids. And depending on where you go, you know, they might have like smoked fish, again, on the more expensive side. Any type of squid is usually relatively cheap. You know, if you don't want to wait for them to fillet the fish, you can get already filleted Norwegian mackerel, you know, salted Russian mackerel. You know, even the lobster isn't that expensive. Uh, you have some smaller fish that are traditionally eaten in, in different cuisines. You know, this is $3.99 a pound, super duper cheap. Uh, even the sea urchin, the uni, you know, this is one of my favorite things to eat. Uh, $11.99 a pound. Obviously, you know, not the highest quality uh, sea urchin roe. I'm actually gonna get one of these today because I love this stuff. You know, I mean, you know, this is definitely not a budget thing, uh, but you know, just for, for $12 to get a lot of nutrients for the day is great. Faro Island is the farm raised salmon. We don't really want that. A lot of the fish eggs you see in the Asian grocery store are actually, you know, they have dye and a bunch of other things added. You can see sorbitol, vinegar, bonito extract. You don't really want that. But they do tend to have just regular plain salted salmon roe. And yeah, I mean $60 a pound, not on a budget, but you know, having a couple tablespoons of this a week isn't really out of the realm of possibility for a lot of people. And if you really want to go for a cheaper option and you love the stuff, you know, there are additives. So you can get, you know, sweet fish roe for a portion of the price, but you're dealing with all these additives that could cause issues. Uh, they do have a lot of live seafood. Uh, 
even though the blue crab might only be $2.99 a pound, the yield is not going to be that high. Some of you guys might be thinking, with all the fresh and frozen seafood at this market, why would we go for canned food? And you're absolutely right. Most of this is more expensive. It tends to have anything from soybean oil to sauces, olive oil, preservatives. You know, we still have the concern, is it wild caught? You know, what was in the can lining? And it being more expensive, you know, what's the point of getting it? But, you know, things like herring can be relatively affordable. You can get clams, oysters that are very nutrient dense, but unfortunately, you see that's in sunflower oil. Sometimes these are in cottonseed oil. So again, the shellfish, very nutrient dense option, even canned, you know, but who's gonna pay, you know, $8 for, you know, half a pound of, of wild salmon where you can get the fresh or the frozen stuff for cheaper. Uh, so if you do want to incorporate canned seafood into your diet, by all means you can. It just tends to be more expensive and worse for you than the fresh or the frozen stuff. You know, stuff like sardines, anchovies, you know, this is pretty expensive. You know, you're paying $3 for two ounces of fish. This is $15 for eight ounces of fish. Not exactly affordable. Oh, I've never seen this before. Liver pate. Pork livers. Pork fat seasoning. I guess if you really didn't have access to liver, you could go with this stuff and have a small amount of it. I wouldn't necessarily go for that. I mean, if you had no other source of liver in your diet, I guess you could have some of this because you know it has a significant amount of vitamin A. If you're buying wild caught fatty fish, just don't have them fillet the fish, take it home and you can eat the liver of the fish. Uh, just keep in mind, the fattier fish tend to have leaner livers and the leaner fish tend to have fattier livers, uh, which do taste better. And then there is the concern about toxins and you know stuff being stored in the fat of the fish. But again, if you're buying wild squat fish, fatty fish, uh, the smaller fish that are lower on the food chain tend to be less polluted, less concerns about that. Again, a lot of this stuff is very subjective. It depends on you know where you're located, what you have access to, what the pricing is, you know what you like, because e even if I had to follow a budget carnivore diet and eat this fish, I would absolutely hate it. You know, I eating mackerel every day, eating herring every day. I don't like the taste of it. It doesn't satisfy my appetite. I can't do it. But but keep in mind, if you guys are on a very strict budget, I'm sure you could swing this type of fatty fish diet for you know less than ten dollars per day easily. Uh, then you know, depending on how much work you want to put into sourcing your food, yeah, you could probably do a grass-fed carnivore diet for less than ten dollars per day. You know, I was in Whole Foods earlier and they had grass-fed ground beef for $7 a pound. So if you could get them to give you, you know, the fat scraps for free, I'm sure that you could end up spending less than $10 per day on grass-fed beef carnivore. It's just a lot more effort is required and you're probably gonna be eating less food in general. So if you're the type of person, you know, if you're bodybuilding, if you're lifting weights and you need to eat like three, four, five pounds of meat per day to maintain your body mass, if you're a larger person, then the fatty fish is a better option and it's not to say that you know you can't splurge a little bit here and there and add more variety to your diet what i will say it is difficult to get your organs in to get all your nutrients in to make sure you're getting every single aspect that's why i like the fatty fish so much you know if you're eating herring if you're eating mackerel if you're throwing in uni once in a while salmon roll once in a while you're getting every single vitamin every single mineral you know all your omega fatty acids essentially everything you need but if you're only eating you know grass-fed ground beef and grass-fed beef fat you know, the nutrient density of that compared to the fatty fish diet is, is insignificant. Uh, that's what I'm trying to convey to you guys. So obviously, you know, a conventional feedlot beef, pork, chicken diet is not sustainable. It's not good for you because of the lack of nutrients, because of the agrochemicals. If you do just a grass-fed beef diet that's cheap and affordable, it's very likely you're not getting enough liver, you're not getting enough brains, you're not getting enough of the nutrients from foods. So even though fish might be less enjoyable for some people. The nutrient density of fish, of fatty fish, from the omega-3 profile perspective, from the vitamin perspective, everything is just better across the board, especially vitamin D. One thing that should definitely not be overlooked is that all of these fatty fish are incredibly high in vitamin D. You know, that's something that most other ruminant animals and most people aren't getting a lot of on their carnivore diet. And you know, if you're not in the sun every day, if you're not taking a vitamin D3 supplement, you, know, you end up getting three, four, 5,000 IU of vitamin D3 per day just by eating two to three pounds of fatty fish. So 
you know, not only is a fatty fish diet cheap, budget friendly, affordable, it's arguably the most nutrient dense diet because of its omega fatty acid profile and because of the high vitamin D content. You know, anyone can eat liver to get some vitamin A. Uh, anyone can, you know, try to increase the quality of the foods in their diet to get, you know, more even fat soluble vitamin profile. And, you know, you could even eat more fermented foods to get vitamin K2. But the micromanaging, the food sourcing with all of that stuff, is not conducive to a budget and it's not conducive to time. A lot of you guys will ask me, you know, is it better to eat half a pound of grass-fed beef per day and have some rice? Is it better to, you know, substitute low inflammatory carbohydrates here and there? This is the safest recommendation I can comfortably give to people. You know, I can't recommend people, you know, consume an only feedlot beef diet instead of a standard American diet. It's very hard for me to do. Uh, I can't recommend people eat half their calories from sourdough rye bread and half their calories from grass-fed beef you know that might work for some people but you know from my understanding of nutrition you want to remove all inflammatory components from your diet unfortunately most modern plant foods are inflammatory to some degree you have to start with a baseline somewhere and if you're not able to start with a baseline of wild caught fish products or pasture raised animal products it's very difficult to see what you know the problems are in your diet and to really you know become an optimal version of yourself uh, so thank you guys for joining me uh, if you haven't checked out Frankie's Free Range Meat, we do have the most affordable grass-fed beef online. You know, our fatty beef box delivered to your door. Nothing comes close in comparison to its price. We have a, a New York strip box where you get nine gigantic New York strip steaks uh, for like $120. Uh, so definitely check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com if you are purchasing meat online because we are cheaper than everyone else. That being said, if you put time into sourcing meat locally, uh, you will be able to find more affordable stuff. Uh, you can also check out Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients and minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. If you guys could please like the video, subscribe if you haven't, hit that bell icon as well as share the video if you can. If you guys do have any other questions pertaining to you know, how to do this on a budget, I mean, this really was my answer. You know, Go to your local Asian market, go to your local restaurant supply store, go to your local supermarket, find a cheap source of wild fatty fish.